And we'll kick off this act with Deb Lavoy joining us from McLean, Virginia, just outside of uh, Washington, DC. So hi, Deb. A short introduction to um, Deb. Um, Deb is a marketing strategist and executive who focuses on fake news and lies in marketing and social media. And in the last four years, she has been studying the technology, psychology and rhetoric of disinformation and how to fight back. Um, I'm really looking forward to Deb's talk on pushing back against disinformation by creating simple, memorable competing ideas. Welcome, Deb. Thank you so very much. And thank you for having me and, and uh, giving me a chance to focus down what I'm trying to say into five minutes. So I am a marketing strategist and technologist. And since very early in 2016, the last cycle of the presidential election, I have been obsessed more or less with these three questions. First, why are politicians so bad at explaining things? Second, why is disinformation taking over the world? And third, what am I going to do about it? So I went into my comfort zone. I did a ton of reading. I did a ton of research. I started building frameworks and theories and um, the summary of four years of work is that disinformation is essentially marketing plus malice. Um, and so this is a problem that I should be able to do something about. I can't solve word peace. I don't know enough about climate change. I don't know enough about racism and injustice, but I know something about marketing. But then I got stuck. Um, maybe some of you have experienced this yourself, too many ideas, not quite enough confidence. Uh, I stayed stuck for a pretty long time. Um, but the clock started ticking down faster and faster and faster. It's 116 days as of today to the next election. Um, and we're at a point where it's now or never. So the only thing left to do is to simplify. And so this was my approach to simplification. Um, I have all kinds of windows that are in the way of what I'm trying to say here. Disinformation in and of itself is something to study, but really what I wanted to look at is who is it affecting? It's affecting roughly three categories of people. The reality team, um, these are people a lot like you and me, we can usually tell truth from fiction. Nobody can tell always. Uh, the indoctrinated, these are the people where, who, um, you know, the lies and conspiracy theories, are affecting them. They believe pretty much anything Fox News says. Uh, and then there's a third category of the confused. These are people, uh, I think about my son who's in college now. They're not focused on the news and they don't really trust any source of information anymore. Oops. Um, so the reality team, we don't really have to worry about them. The indoctrinated, that's not a 120 day problem. That's a longer term problem. I can't help them. Um, so let's focus on the confused. So why is disinformation so impactful on the confused? And it's because the information space looks like this. The disinformation is, uh, presents itself in really bold, really simplistic terms. It's incredibly pervasive. It's everywhere. It's unavoidable. It's very, very repetitive. It sticks in your mind. Whereas the more reliable information uh, requires more engagement. You need to read it more carefully. It's not always presented in such simple terms. They're not using the tools of rhetoric and marketing to push information in the same as successfully as disinformation. So our job is in this very brief window of time, not to end disinformation or disrupt disinformation, although that would be nice, um, but to compete with it. So the job is to make real information as visible, simple and memorable as the fake stuff. Uh, and then the confused will have a, a much more balanced understanding of what's going on in the world. They will have opportunities to turn to sources that resonate more with their general sense that, you know, things should be reality-based, things should make sense. So uh, I got together with some uh, friends and we have formed what we're calling the reality team. 
And what we're doing is three things, uh, explainers, talking points, and a network. Uh, explainers take uh, issues one at a time, issues that should perhaps be simple but have been complicated by disinformation. Uh, should I wear a mask? We give them the bottom line up front, so within three seconds, people should have the key points. We get into the Q&A of it, uh, the common questions we're seeing out in the world and answering them in very plain language. And at the end, we show our work. So we show that the work is valid and reliable by showing the uh, all the references and places that we have uh, uh, retrieved this information from. Uh, then we build talking points. Um, masks do work. Uh, and masks are patriotic. Masks are something you can do for your country right now. So we take these talking points and we refine them as we see how people are responding to them and we push them out into the network. Uh, we are ramping up to try to get to publishing three topics per week and as much uh, exposure as we can possibly get on these things. And this is reliant on uh, the network that we are building. The network is building rapidly, but we have to accelerate it as much as possible to make it work. Um, so we need some help. So if you're sitting around wondering what you can do uh, in this next three month period, maybe, maybe you could help us out. Uh, we need people to do the research, we need writers, we need social media managers to help uh, manage the various channels. Um, uh, some better designers would be great, actually professional designers. Uh, we need people who are great at networking and we are also uh, looking for funding so that we can use not just organic growth, but also um, uh, the engines of amplifications on the platforms. Um, so if you are so inclined, you can uh, follow us on Twitter or uh, Instagram at realityteam11. You can contact me at deb at realityteam.org. And uh, with any luck, we can give disinformation some competition in the next uh, important time frame. And thank you very, very much.